When we talk to salespeople, how are they looking at the marketplace and how is that affecting what they expect? 74% say that they expect sales opportunities, uh, that they're in decline, that it's noticeable. 65% report that they've lost deals to COVID, so that deals have completely fallen off the table. I was speaking with a dealer yesterday um, about a deal which was uh, in the works and which got reduced dramatically um, because they re-looked at everything when they were considering how many people were coming back to the office, et cetera, right? So definitely some losses in business. Uh, 83% of those surveyed noticed lower buying rates in general. Um, 50% say that uh, purchases like big ones have been postponed. Uh, so they're not off the table, but they're definitely taking their time. And 67% don't expect to hit their sales targets. So what did we say on those numbers? It was over 70%. So we're pretty much in line with uh, how the you know the marketplace globally is you know kind of experiencing this, right? I want to hear from you all what your experience is with this current economic reality. Let's start with Carrie. What are you seeing out there for the current economic reality with your with your customers? What are they saying? Uh, well, we allowed any customer that wanted out of their contract out of their contract at the beginning of COVID-19. And we lost 80% of our managed services outbound practice almost overnight. But wow. that was preferable. Like for me, that was preferable. I didn't want to have to fire people one at a time as I was unable to um, support them. Uh, so we were fortunate. We received PPP funding from the U.S. government. And that covered our payroll for you know, about three months. So we didn't need to terminate or lay off anyone. We we were fortunate that that was the, our experience all throughout the pandemic. Without the PPP, I probably wouldn't have had to terminate anyone, but I likely would have to maintain my margins. Yeah. So our MSP clients were, I don't know if they were hit hard, but they definitely anticipated that they were going to have some um, loss of revenue. And I think they wanted to get out in front of it like all of us. So I don't even know that... I'd say half of the people that I've spoken to that left our client roster didn't experience the loss of monthly recurring that they were expecting, but they absolutely experienced up to a 75% loss of predicted revenue for projects. Yeah. So there was, you know, obviously some challenges, but on the other side of the business, our vendor practice had never been healthier or more aggressive. All of a sudden there were no trade shows to go to and everyone that was like, Ooh, telemarketing was like, Oh, telemarketing. So <laughs> that did, we did all right there. And uh, some of you may know, I mean, the pandemic was pretty good for me. My company was acquired last week. Yay. So, congratulations. Thank yeah. you. There was a lot of blessings for us through the pandemic. Like I got out of debt, for example. So I think there was a lot of, um, a lot of immediate, like, how are we going to mitigate this? What are we going to do? And it was like, okay, not as bad as we expected. And I'm seeing a lot of people now making big investments in things like their infrastructure, right? Like uh, people are like plowing the building next door to them to put down parking lots. And like, they're just making investments with things that the PPP loan covered their payroll. And now they had like three months worth of money to do something with, plus the idle loan. So everyone's got all this free money floating around right now. Anybody that didn't need it to begin with is now thinking of uh, creative ways that they can invest those, uh, you know, one percent interest idle loans. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'd like a little of that cash. You know, for us, it was an interesting time, right? If if you can think of anything, the last thing you want to do is stop selling, and that's the first thing that we did. You know, I, I would say that we just paused. You know, everybody's like, "Oh my God, we really need to get it in front of this." I said, "Just stop, stop, don't sell anything." stop doing renewal, stop doing all this stuff. Let's go and help these people. And we really just buckled down and just went to, you know, just went to market and started doing podcasts, giving business advice, bringing good ways to stay productive, ways to go to market, ways to go out and, and actually take care, take, take advantage of technology that was available to them for low cost, or even had some of our vendors that donated some technologies that were helping businesses stay moving during that time. You know, and I, for us, it was really important for us not to to sell anything and to actually help. And I, I think that that wow. really, really helped us a lot and move the needle forward because it built a lot of uh, reputation and credit with those particular individuals that now, like to Kerry's point, you know, the print side of the house took a massive hit, massive hit. But the managed services side kept going. It kept growing and growing and growing. And it was ironic because we weren't selling anything. They were just pouring in the doors looking for technology solutions. So we said, hey, this is working. Just let's just keep going down this road. 
And now a lot of those customers are giving us referrals and, and really and, and moving forward on that. And we're still not pushing a lot, but we're just we're still helping. And so it just changed our whole mantra overall. I think MSPs as a whole, to Kerry's point a moment ago, they saw a huge growth. They were all afraid that their customers were going to leave because we're so used to as MSPs used to being the guy that gets cut first. This was the first time that MSPs actually stood in one. So it was kind of an interesting time. And I hear that all across the channel. So it's an interesting time to be in technology. So when you think about when COVID hit, there were certain little, little slices of a segment that just shut down. We have a big portfolio, for instance, with MSPs who focus on dentists. Dentists stopped. So, you know, a lot of them went out of business. Uh, we had to do a lot of extensions where we gave them one, two, three, four months of a break, you know, hoping that things would come back. And we certainly had uh, some write-offs, uh, you know, uh, just people went out of business. So we definitely took a financial hit uh, from that perspective. Um, you know, sitting where we are today uh, and compared to what we were thinking early on, it actually hasn't been as severe as we thought, um, which is the good news. Um, you know, to the point that we've already heard a few times, the MSP business, they really didn't lose a lot of customers. When I look at our collaborants, again, when I look at the end users, how many of them went out of business, not many, fairly flat. Project business has absolutely slowed down. Uh, we have a big portfolio in the copier space. Um, you know, we're certainly not hitting our number as those deals are shrinking or, or getting put off. But I am still pleasantly surprised at the activity that we are seeing today. So we kind of saw a very mix of what everybody else saw. So initially we saw a lot of contraction and people worried in the IT uh, managed service space. Uh, most of our customers were concerned. PPP money came through for them and their customers. So as restrictions were lifted, we saw them do a lot of project work. So our customers are very busy with project work, but as Greg was saying, they're not financing right now. They're not looking for the money because that PPP gave them that money to do those projects. So, uh, you know, the managed service, at least our customers are never have been so healthy. But what we're seeing contraction in is net new managed service sales. And going back to a lot of people are saying, OK, um, we want to move managed service providers right now but we're just a little hesitant right now because we just don't know what we'll get and if everybody is still fully staffed because they've had to contract or whatever in their own small business. So there's been a little bit of that. So when you talk about the Omni channel, we've had to shift dynamically and very quickly to using more and taking on practices that we typically shied away from. Uh, cold calling is one like with as Carrie said, everybody was much more open to calling because um, less face to face. We had to launch a PPC program instead yeah. of just our organic. Uh, we had to move into online advertising on LinkedIn with very pointed and and list management going into LinkedIn to attract. And, you know, it was rough because we, we were in uncharted waters and our customers knew that. And so. Um, we lost one or two customers, but we have actually added business probably by a third. So we're well ahead of where we want it to be at this point, you know, in our projections. So well, I, I'm in a very mixed environment because the, the MSPs know they need to market and, and they're looking for it. And as a matter of fact, we have we have multiple meetings just winding up this week for a couple of new clients. So. And we didn't, um, good or bad, we didn't take any of the, the PPP or idle. Um, we've been able to stay floating and, and maintain our margins and, and move upstream a little bit. So it's, it's been, you know, a great experience. Um, as Juan said, one of the, you know, the best ways, and we feel this at Tiger Paw, uh, to really help people is to help people. So we produce a lot of great content. You can check us out at tigerpawsoftware.com. Uh, you can also look at our blog series. Uh, which is at uh, blog.tigerpaw.com and of course Tiger Paw Radio at tigerpaw.com, one company, Tiger Paw Radio.